Welcome to Guitar Discoveries. I'm Robert Cassard. I'm so glad to have you here today. I rarely talk about sort of philosophy when it comes to music, but I think I need to do more of it because for people who are really trying to improve their playing, to really jump to the next level, sometimes it isn't a matter of practicing more scales or, or doing a lot of the things that we normally associate with technical excellence and, and becoming a great guitarist. Sometimes it comes down to a simple matter of focus. And so I want to share with you today two questions that I've learned to ask myself before I play any guitar solo. Stick around. So the moment of a guitar solo is, a, is an interesting thing. If you're playing live, it comes along, you got to play the solo, and it's done. Whatever happened, happened, right? In a recording studio, you get multiple passes at it. But I've found that there is a way to enhance your focus and to really get better solos from yourself uh, every time. So the first question that I ask is, what does the song want right now? Now, that's a loaded question because a, it puts the focus on the song, right? And what's happening in that song in the moment. What's the mood of the song? What is the emotion of the song? What will further the effect it's going to have on the listeners? So that question does a couple of things. One, because it says, what does the song need right now? It anchors you into the present moment. That's really important. You gotta be here now. The second thing is by saying, what does the song want? It takes the focus off you. It's not really about what am I capable of? What can I do right now? Because it's a trap. You know, you come to the guitar solo and you think, I have to do something that's impressive. That's often the urge. I have to impress the listener. Think of it this way. What is going to emotionally connect for the listener? So, you know, there's an ongoing controversy, for example, about Neil Young. Is Neil Young a great lead guitarist or a lousy lead guitarist? <laughs> you know, it really doesn't matter what your opinion is on that. But what I can tell you is that Neil Young is kind of the epitome of someone who plays for the emotion, not for the technique. Now, you may not want to go that far, one note solo, but you might want to say, I don't need to do fancy pyrotechnics here to make the point. Sometimes simplicity carries the song and the emotion of the listener much farther. So what does the song need right now? So the second question I like to ask has a little bit of a mystical overtone, I think, because it, it's really about you connecting completely with whatever instrument you're playing at that moment. And so what I do, literally, as the song is cruising along and it's coming up to the guitar solo, I will literally hold the guitar in my hands and look down at it so I can experience the instrument and get a sense of its beauty and its personality. And then I ask it, what do you want to say right now? Kind of a funny question, right? Because it's not about me anymore. It's, it's about me and the guitar, right? What do you want to say right now? Brings the focus onto the instrument. It helps me get over my ego. Again, like the first question did, but it also connects me to the instrument in this really intimate way. And then what does the guitar say? That's what we find out. When you're in the recording studio, it's a particularly interesting time to practice this, right? Because you really have unlimited takes unless you're time restricted. So you can just keep asking that question. What do you want to say right now? What do you want to say right now? Now, whether you as a guitarist are capable of articulating and doing all the manual dexterity moves that are required for the guitar to say what it wants to say, you know, the, the point there is it starts, you get past that very quickly because what I find is that the instrument does have something that it wants to say. And when I'm translating that, I may not be the perfect person to, to translate it, but what'll happen is I'll find that I will get to the heart of the guitar solo much more quickly. You know, maybe two or three takes instead of what could be, you know, 10, 20 or more. 
Let me share a handful of examples of what I'm talking about. Now, in each of these cases, I ask the two questions. What does the song want right now? And what does the instrument want to say? So when recording I'm a Believer, a dark minor key version of it, I asked the song, what does this want? And the answer was it wanted a lead solo that would be like tight and in the box, not big and bravado, right? Very, very tight. And I asked the guitar, which was a Les Paul copy, what do you want to say? Here's what came out. When recording Say You Love Me, which is a song that has a lot of refrains that say falling, 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 I asked, what does the song need right now? And the answer was something that would go start low and climb, go up, rising, rising, rising. Here's what that turned out like. And then when recording a very clean, beautiful, and open version of Tougher Than the Rest by Springsteen, same thing happened. I was like, well, what does the song need right now? The answer was it needed something that would capture the pain and heartache that the song is all about. And then when I asked the guitar, what do you want to say right now? Here's what it told me. Honey, I'm tougher than Recording that solo actually brought me to tears. That's not very common, but I'm telling you right now, if my ego had been standing in the way, it never would have happened. I hope it makes a huge difference to you. Please try asking yourself these questions. Do it when you're recording in your studio and do it when you're playing live and tell me, come back, leave a comment and tell me what the results are for you. I'll be really shocked if it doesn't take your playing from you trying to kind of impress and show off to you doing exactly what the song needs, which, guess what, is way more impressive and impactful to the listener. That's how you blow the audience away, not by just flying up and down the, key, uh, up and down the fretboard. To me, it feels like magic when I ask those questions. Things come out of the guitar and out of my hands that don't really seem possible. They're things that move me. And I think that's because now I'm sort of in collaboration with the song, with the instrument, and with the situation be here now. All right, Mysticism 101 for guitarists, right? There's your guitar discovery for the day. I hope it helps you. It certainly made a huge difference in my instrumental playing. Really appreciate you coming by. Please go to guitardiscoveries.com. You can find all my videos, original music, stuff from my band. It's all over there. Uh, let's see. I have a Zazzle store now, and I'll put a link to that. If you like, um, if you, if you like rare guitars like Dan Electro's or Stella's, I'm going to start putting some logo uh, merchandise up there that you just can't find anywhere else, stuff that I've never been able to find. So check that out if you want to. And what else? 
please subscribe so you get notified. Oh, and hit the bell so you get notified when new videos come out. I have so much fun doing this and I really am eager to hear how it helps. I hope it helps you. Talk to you soon.